Hello guys, Colonel Ninny here. In this first early video, we looked at the control inputs required to steer the aircraft on the ground. And so to keep the aircraft straight, you're using a combination of power, brakes, and rudder. And the object is to go in the direction you want without losing control and ground looping. Now each aircraft behaves a little bit differently on the ground, and we're going to look at some of those differences in this video. In German and American aircraft, the steering is achieved by left and right rudder, left and right brake, and combinations of power. It's very sensitive, and using both brakes together will bring you to a stop. A takeoff is simply a very high speed taxi until you get to the flying speed to get off the ground. So the control inputs are exactly the same. It's very important with heavily laden bombers to be tapping those tow brakes left and right to keep it straight because once it starts to pivot on you, it's going to ground loop and wipe your airplane out. On this Heinkel 111, notice the continual rudder and brake inputs to keep the aircraft straight. Once we reach flying speed and take off, then the wheels aren't on the ground and the brakes won't work. Controlling your aircraft's direction on landing is exactly the same. As we transition onto the ground, we apply the brakes and the rudder to keep it straight, eventually bring it to a full stop. So get out there and practice taxiing at higher speeds, see what the rudder inputs are, see what you need to do to be able to control the aircraft. Practice putting it out of control and getting it back under control. A different braking system is used in British and Russian aircraft. Instead of tow brakes, there's a single lever on the control column and you can see the activation of the gauge to the left. Pressing the rudder left or right will only activate the brakes on the one side. Leaving them centered will apply equal brake pressure and bring you to a stop. And it's identical for the Russian system except you have no gauge. But with practice you'll find that the PE-2 is one of the easiest aircraft to taxi in a confined space and to take off with. It's kind of like driving a go-kart. Any tailwheel equipped aircraft has the tendency to ground loop if uh, not properly managed. So a great step forward came with the tricycle gear, the invention of the nose wheel steering, which is operated by the rudder pedals. The braking system is still the same, left and right toe brakes for the American aircraft. And it takes all the guesswork out of taxiing, taking off and landing. There's one final consideration to taxiing with uh, late war aircraft with such powerful engines such as the P-47. We don't need 2,000 horsepower to taxi and that's translated into the propeller and the propeller produces the thrust. Sometimes that thrust is too much and we can't control the aircraft on the ground. Fortunately we do have a control that controls the propeller pitch and by reducing it to zero, we can taxi quite easily with this monstrous engine. Just don't forget to put it back up to full pitch when you're taking off. Or you may not develop enough power to take off. And our approach and landing is usually made with the propellers at uh, full pitch. But once we've slowed the aircraft down, we can then reduce the prop RPM so we can taxi easily. Now, once again, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate all your comments and your support. See you next time. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please like it or subscribe. Or if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment. Thank you guys.